Hi and welcome back to another video, also follow-up video regarding the 7900 XTX Liquid Devil. In the previous video we were testing this card and I saw that this has a lot of potential. The clocking of the GPU was insanely high and it only seemed to be held back and limited by the power target. And unlike Nvidia there is no shunt you can easily short or modify, but we can probably fool the power reading with the Elmore EVC. And that's what we're going to try in today's video. Hetzner now offers a new dedicated root server powered by a Ryzen 7 7700 CPU, which you should definitely not miss. The AX52 starts at 59 euro per month and is equipped with two 1 terabyte NVMe SSDs, gigabyte connection and as usual unlimited traffic. The powerful 8 core CPU is paired with 64 gigabyte of DDR5 memory by default, but can be upgraded to up to 128 gigabyte DDR5 memory and even with ECC if required. You will benefit from Hetzner's excellent service and of course there is no minimum contract period. Find out more in the link below. To attach the Elmore EVC I first removed the backplate, added back some of the screws so I can still test the card even without the backplate. The mounting pressure will be a bit different, a bit less but should be fine without any kind of like high load to just to see if the EVC is like detecting the VRM controller correctly. The VRM controller is sitting right in the back of this card. Typically you can find some debug header close to the VRM controller, which is not the case on this card. It's the same on a 6900 XT, so you can find it right in front here with these like three bigger pins. I think something like J4003 is written next to it. You can also find this online in the Elmore forums. Here we have the EVC with this three pin like header connector, which I want to solder on there. First of all, I have to check if the pins are actually the same. So just to check like ground and SCA, SDL are the same for I square C connection. Quickly checking the connection to ground. So the top one should be ground, which is the case. You can see that uh, Makita is complaining in the background. Um, yeah, she demands playtime. So <laughs> you quickly have to suffer through the meowing and then, come on Makita, should be 6 and 7 kilo ohm. Yeah, and now it's cat playtime. Okay, so, I think, should be fine now. Attach the wire also in a way that I can hide it and fit it underneath the back plate, at least in theory, this way you could use this inside a daily rig. If that's something that's recommended, that's a completely different topic. Seems to be working uh, fine uh, straight out of the box. I added the MP2857 to the I2C connection too. Also did a quick test, enabled monitoring, because you also want to figure out if it's the like, right controller on some cards. You have several controllers and then you want to make sure that it's the correct one for the correct output, but if you just check the current and also the power consumption, then obviously this can only be the GPU and not like the memory, which is something you could have on a different card where you maybe have multiple controllers, but so far this looks fine. I will now remount the backplate simply because uh, the mounting pressure has to be there, temperatures has to be great in regard of like increasing power consumption, increasing the power target and also maybe the voltages. I'm running a gaming load in the background simply because it's much more convenient. I don't have to run like 3 Mark over and over again. I set the power target to plus 15% with MSI Afterburner, which causes the card to consume about 420 watt under load, resulting in a GPU clock somewhere between 2950 to 3000 megahertz, which is pretty high for 7900 XTX, at least non-overclocked. Like this is stock boost just with increased power target. And this is how it looks on the system. With WireView we can read out about 380 to 390 watt power consumption across the three 8-pin PCIe connectors, which also means that the remaining power draw across the X16 PCIe slot is maybe about like 10 to 15 watts. So basically nothing compared to this part. In the EVC software we can see loop one I out gain. So like the output current gain, I guess that's some kind of factor that increases or decreases the measured current. And 
I guess that's the only thing we can try to maybe fool the reading of the power consumption. This should not have any kind of impact on like the voltage that's fed to the GPU. So I guess we can just play around with this, maybe increase or decrease this and see how it affects the read out power consumption. That's indeed the correct value to change. I slightly lowered it to 628, which already showed some kind of effect. I'm going to decrease it further and at the same time film GPU-Z and you will be able to see the effect. Previously we already had like 400 to 420, this already decreased now, but pay attention. I'm now decreasing the value to 600. And you can see the change already in this curve on the right. It's only a small change, but we decreased from about 390 to maybe like 375 watt red out. And now double checking with wire view, we can see actually nothing changed. So the card still performs exactly the same as before. It's running the same clock, same voltage, as you can see, because otherwise this would have changed as well. But we just fooled the current that the card is actually reading. Of course, I'm also interested to see if we can actually increase the GPU voltage itself. And I set an offset of 25 millivolt. After applying the offset, we can see that previously in GPU-C, it was always somewhere at around 1.02, 1.03 and it's now reading constantly 1.04, 1.05, something in this direction, so it definitely applied. You could also see a bump in frequency, running 3050, sometimes 3070 megahertz, and that's without any kind of like clock offset, which I said, so that's pretty much stock condition with some slight mods, but looks very promising. Checking in 3 Mark, you can see the effect straight away, because that was not possible previously. I think we saw maybe 420, 430 watt power consumption, and now it's above 500. It's a solid increase. I will now spend a bit more time like figuring out what kind of max clocks I can run, what kind of like temperatures and everything we will see and then we'll be back. Slowly but steady getting there and like right now I'm just still lowering the IO gain value, the, like the, the current value. And as you can see the power reading is still just like on the max about 464 watt. I will show you the real reading in a second. Temperature is looking great still still below 50 degrees Celsius on the GPU temp and I mean it's getting warmer on the hotspot but still in a fine region. You can see the clock in 3 Mark, like 3050 to peak 3100. All right so during my German take I just had this and I think yeah I think the PSU just shut off. I'm not sure if I'm hitting some kind of current limit because it was closing in on 600 watt pulled from three 8-pin connectors, but at least I could hear something like being triggered inside a PSU. Seems to be running better now, at least almost past the first GT1. So far, pretty solid, pretty satisfied graphic score, 17,700 points, which is currently rank number seven in the Hall of Fame of the graphic score with the 7,900 XTX. My overall score is not that high because I'm running a 13,600K because I don't really care about the overall score, just the graphic score. And the GPU clock though, I mean, this is 3,200 megahertz. That is insane. This, that, like, that's really high for 3D mic, especially on water. But you can already see an effect on the temperature. It's like hotspot about 100 degrees Celsius. And I'm still power limited. I'm still decreasing the eye out gain. Still makes you think about the NVIDIA connector, right? I mean, pulling sometimes 650 watt across three of the legacy 8 pin PCIe connectors. So far, at least, card is not up in flames. Makita finally also asleep. So I can focus on overclocking the system. The highest score I could reach in the end in 3D Mark Times by Extreme was 17,754 points, currently rank number 9 in the Hall of Fame. I don't really get why you have multiple users, like multiple results by the same user in the Hall of Fame. I also have two in there with the same card, same setup, doesn't really make much sense, otherwise it would be like rank 5. Anyway, still a very impressive result with a 7900 XTX. Also, if we just look into the GT1 result, it's almost 115 FPS, which is getting close to an RTX 4090. But you also have to keep in mind that at this date, this card was pulling like very close to 700 watt, and you can see that it's getting quite inefficient. 
with this like very hard overclock, increased voltage and everything, obviously, uh, it's becoming much, much more inefficient than running the stock configuration also versus a stock 4090. Still, enjoyed playing with this, enjoyed it with the EVC. It delivered once more. If you want to check it out, you can find a link to the EVC in the description. I also checked gaming load quickly to see the kind of clocks we would see in gaming load. And the card with this type of overclock was constantly running like above 3360 megahertz, which I also personally consider absolutely impressive for this type of GPU. That's it for today's video. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye bye.